Hey, what's up? It's Stefan here. And today I'm going to show you how to use Claude to write a ton of new leads for a sales letter. You could also do this for like uh, openings of ads as well, but we're going to focus on sales letters today. So the way this works, first of all, you're going to use the, um, like the viral hooks, which I shared how to do in a uh, previous email to my list. And I will also link to the document here with that process. Basically with that process, you are using the viral every time tool from CA labs. You're asking for viral hooks, uh, in a different niche. So I shared that process. You would do this for whatever niche you're writing in weight loss, golf, survival, whatever it might be. Right. And so you would go through that. And again, I'm not going to teach you how to do that in this video. I'll do another video. And then once I do that, I'll, I'll link to it in the future as well. But right now you have the document, but for example, like viral hooks for a video about prepping survival, things that the audience believes to be true, but they're not, they're instead quite contrarian and surprising. The audience would be patriotic conservative Americans who are concerned about disaster preparedness, food security, and government overreach. I hear hooks. Think story and rice and beans for apocalypse is enough. Think again. Why relying on your firearm stash might be the worst survival strategy. Kind of interesting. Um, ever thought about using gold to barter in a disaster? Here's this why, why it's a terrible idea. Is your home really safe? Uh, is, your, is your home really your safe haven during disaster? You might be surprised. You can lie to you about the perfect bug out vehicle. Why your survival garden won't save you when shit hits the fan. Uh, bunkers and the ultimate, the ultimate survival solution or a death trap. Government overreach and disasters. Here's what's more likely to get you. Think water storage is your priority. Here's what that, uh, here's why that could be a fatal error. Panic buying a crisis. Here's why it's the worst thing preppers do. Okay. So like there's a bunch of different hook types. And for this, um, example, I'm going to show you in today's video, what I'm doing is I'm going to take, uh, this, uh, sales letter that did really well in the survival niche many years ago called backyard Liberty. Okay. And I'll show you the lead of this right now. I'm gonna show you how to put this all together. Okay. So it's like fellow Patriot. There's a reason why the U.S. government is so eager to disarm the American people. It's got little to do with crime rates or mass murders, but everything to do with the very reason the Second Amendment was created for, to protect the people from a tyrannical government. Because when a major disaster hits the USA, a recent executive order allows FEMA to confiscate your food stockpile, and just like in the old USSR, to give it to the government-dependent masses. That's right. If you invested $30,000 or more in a survival stockpile, or you've been daydreaming about having enough food to last you a decade, then you've got to watch this urgent video. Hi, my name is Alec Deacon, and in this short and controversial presentation that will not be up for long, I'm going to expose how a devastating once in 60 years event, along with corporate greed and corruption, are setting the stage for a social and economic time bomb that will detonate right in the middle of the US. I'll reveal how the impending collapse of the US food supply system will steal the food from your kids' tables, leaving them hungry and helpless and forcing them to scavenge for scraps. And I'll explain what you must do today to ensure that you and your family not only survive, but actually rise to the top of a fallen society when chaos rules and communities need someone to lead them. But that's not all. If you stick until the end of this very short presentation, I'll give you a somewhat weird but insanely effective way to build a five year, 10 year, even 20 year stockpile of super nutritious food that the government simply cannot steal from you. Best of all, this uh, still secret method costs you up to 20 times less than what you pay uh, to pay than what you have to pay on survival food, literally just a few cents per meal. And it goes into like the rest of it, right? So that's like the lead here. Okay. So what do we do with this? First thing I did is I went to Claude. I'll give you these prompts. I'll make this bigger. And I said, you know, this is a sales letter for a product in the survival space. This is the only part you would change when you're doing this yourself, you know, in the pet space, in the golf space, in the water space. I'm going to analyze it and do two things. First, I want you to tell me who the target demographic is. Second, I want you to help me come up with identifying different elements of the sales letter that can be used as a big promise hook in the lead or opening of the sales letter. These promise hooks are very specific and typically have a lot of curiosity inherent in them too. For example, might be something like the five superfoods that can blah, the 30 second assessment that helps you why, or why is the outcome the market wants. So as you go through the sales letter, anytime you see lists or a series of questions in a row or other interesting things, you would tag those as potential promise hooks that we could tease in the lead. Also feel free to add unique nicknames to the list too, in order to further increase curiosity. Go ahead and give it a try now. Now, the point here, one, one important thing is like, we're giving it the whole sales letter. And by the way, if you haven't seen one of my previous videos, um, in this case, I have the transcript, but all you do is go command shift V. So even if you went to a, sales letter that, you know, had a bunch of like copy on it. Right. I'll show you an example. What this looks like I'll go to ESPN.com, uh, chef for a second. I need to watch, watch me some masters this weekend. Okay. Like this is an article on ESPN.com, right? This is just an example. So I control C just copied it. Now if I just open up like a new document, 
right? If I control V, it's gonna be all formatted and weird and have images and all that. But for Claude, we don't want that because we wanna kind of keep the document lightweight and not have too many, uh, it has a certain size that's to be below. So if I go Command Shift V, it just does that, right? And so there's no images. So that's why I do Command Shift V, okay? Um, so, okay, I just, I did that part. I was trying to write this as an email and I'm like, I really have to make it a video. So again, I'll give you this prompt. And in fact, I'm doing like, I'm, I'm here, you can see, I started doing this email where I link to the, uh, the viral hooks process that I referenced a minute ago. And then, right, you're opening up Claude 3, attaching a PDF of the sales letter, sales page you wanna write a new lead for, including this prompt. So I'll make sure you have access to a document that has this stuff, right? Or I'll give you the Claude conversation history, whatever it is, um, right? So as you'll see here, Claude comes back. All right, the target audience for the sales letter appears to be patriotic conservative Americans who are concerned about disaster preparedness, food security, and government overreach. Some key characteristics, distrust of the government, concern about tyranny, prepper survivalist mindset, focused on self-reliance, having supplies to survive a crisis, likely older demographic, them in the US, areas that allow space for backyard basement, politically conservative, motivated by protecting their families' well-beings in a crisis scenario. So what are the potential promise hooks? The four horsemen of the food apocalypse that signal coming cataclysmic collapse. My cat's yowling in the background, so that's great. Now this one is already the hook, right? Um, in that lead. So what else does it have? The weird but insanely effective way to stockpile five to 20 years worth of food for pennies per meal. How Palestinians are using the pocket-sized miracle of aquaponics to feed their families in an arid war zone. That one's very interesting, perhaps controversial, um, but actually relevant again today, which is really interesting. The three sturdy species of fish for, and I, made, I think it made up this nickname, which is cool, for aquaponics and the popular one that can get you in legal trouble. The perfect alternative to a $4,000 fish tank that costs more $75 and sometimes free. The simple technique to grow big juicy tomatoes, radishes, broccoli, and even forbidden carrots with aquaponics. How to grow food in unlikely places like a rooftop, garage, or basement, and even strawberries in the winter. So it's kind of doing a lot of, um, some of these are like special filtration system. They're very aquaponics specific. 27 items you need to hoard before a crisis when panic mobs ransack the store. The real survival lessons from economic collapses in Argentina and uh, Bosnia. Okay, cool. So we have that part going. Give me one second here. All right, cool. So I made a training that I did for a copy of Pro members uh, back at our event where I shared some of this process. I used golf in that case. But let me go back to like the next prompt, okay? So after that first prompt, and I'll get this into the document, again, I'll give you a document of all of this. Um, the first thing is, are there other potential hooks, other interesting things that we could do? So I'm literally just gonna ask Claude that, right? So this is a great job. Are there any other potential promise hooks you can find? I'm gonna say, or come up with, or come up with. So I'm actually modifying it on the fly here, okay? And by the way, while it's doing that, I know, I'm not to, hopefully this isn't too ADD for you, but I ran that first viral every time thing. I'm gonna do it again for challenges in the background. This is what's so great about AI. You can do several things at once, right? So um, have that running in the background, back over here. Okay, so you can see it's coming with some more promises or things like that, okay? Um, hmm. Okay, the 60 second food security assessment that reveals your family is at risk of going hungry in a crisis based on the series of questions that are in the thing. The backyard abundance blueprint, how to turn a tiny 300 square foot backyard into a perpetual source of fresh vegetables and fish. That's a pretty strong promise. Um, the recession proof protein powerhouse, three fish species that thrive in aquaponics and provide vital nutrients in a crisis more specific promise hook based on the fish section. The five rookie aquaponic mistakes that can sabotage your food supply and how to avoid them. The Dust Bowl devastation map, how the looming return of 1930s drought conditions could impact your food security. The grocery shrink rate exposed, how food companies are stealthily reducing packer sizes to hide inflation. This would make sense in today's time too where there's inflation, right? The aquaponics abundance accelerator, add this to your system potentially to your food production. The food riot forecast, what the global food price index reveals about impending civil unrest. That's pretty interesting. The heirloom seed starter kit, I probably don't like that one. And that's sort of an actual product one. But I'm like, all right, cool. There's some interesting stuff here, okay? Um, so then I think I have it like basically, you know, sometimes I might ask them for more nicknames we could use for some of them. In this case, I'm not as worried about, like I could do it to show you. Um, sorry, I know I have too many documents open here. Uh,
do here? Let's go back to this uh, Four Horsemen of the Food Apocalypse. I mean, I probably have to change so much of the sales letter. So this is, okay, sorry, this is a really important point too. The reason why we're asking it to, to do things from the sales letter is so that we can do new leads without having to change other parts of the sales letter, right? Because if you make a promise in the lead, but it's not fulfilled in the actual sales letter, people can get pissed off. Like, you know, you promised me this stuff in the lead, I was hooked, you never paid it off, now I'm pissed off and annoyed, right? Um, you know, it depends if you are cool with that or not, but obviously if you can make a promise and fulfill on it in the sales letter, that's even better. So, you know, if you wanted to decide to ask for other nicknames, for example, the Aquapunks Abundance Accelerator. Um, let's just do it real quick. So this one, uh, oh wait, so I thought I copied that before. I'm gonna do that one there. Um, other potential nicknames or ways of framing it as a promise in the lead. Okay. So then we're gonna put it together, and you'll see how we do that in a second. So what I'm gonna do, well actually I'll do this on the thing. It's fine. Let me open another doc. And what I'm gonna do here. Some interesting things. I'll come back to that. I'm gonna go just copy and paste this target demographic stuff. Command shift V. Next, I am going to take some of these other promises I liked. Yeah, I'll copy and paste all of them to start. Let's see if it's anything we like down here. I don't really like these new nicknames, and that's okay. All right, so really what I would do, right, basically what we're going to do after this is we're going to upload the sales letter again, or in this case, we can probably, we don't have to do it. Um, you know, I might do it in a new chat, frankly. It doesn't matter. Let's, so, okay, like here's a transcript for a full sales letter in the blank niche, right? Like in this case, it'll be survival, not golf. Analyze it. Right, we already did this, we might not need to do it again, but we'll see. All right, now we write some new leads for the same sales letter and selling the same product. Here are specific, specific details as you go to write it. And what we're gonna be doing is we're basically giving it two hooks. Hook number one, curiosity, which is gonna come from that viral every time thing, which I'll, I'll go take inputs and copy and paste them in. Right, target demographic we got from what we did before. And hook number two is the promise of why people should watch, okay? So what we just did, is we got a bunch of promises of why people should watch, like the 60 second food security assessment, um, you know, the recession proof protein powerhouse, five rookie aquaponic mistakes, the dust pole devastation map, the grocery shrink rate exposed, the aquaponics, Montessori food right forecast, yada, yada, okay? Um, as well as some of the ones up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll give you a link to this whole quad conversation where a document I create. Let's pick the ones that I think are actually really good. So Four Horsemen of the Food Apocalypse is already in, that is the main hook of the lead currently. So I'm gonna remove that. Um, I like these ones. That one's kind of interesting. Um, like that one. That one, um, the food sec, you know. And this one's interesting. Again, I hope you can see how this could be good in an ad as well, but I can talk about more perhaps. Uh, cool. I'm torn on that one, I'm gonna take it out. Dust pull devastation map. I don't like this name, the grocery shrink ray exposed, but it's fine for now. I didn't really like this one. Food riot forecast, it's kind of interesting. And these ones I don't like, okay? So these are all like our promise hooks. We can almost label them as promise hooks. 
Okay. Now we need the, our viral curiosity hooks, right? So if we go back to what the prompt looks like, we've got curiosity and then you've got the promise hook. So we'll do curiosity ones above. Okay. So we can honestly remove this stuff. We don't need it necessarily. And so let's do curiosity hooks, promise hooks. Okay. So now if we go back over to that viral every time generator, let's go back to the first one, the prepper MIPS exposed. Okay. So fine. We'll do this one for now. I might, I might weed some of these out. Okay. Um, I don't like all the exclamation points, frankly, right? But survival strategy. Um, by using goals, a terrible idea. I might change this to say I kind of like this idea of like water isn't as important. Now the thing does have water, but okay. And then let's just do some from here as well. So this was the one about uh, challenges. I actually don't think for... This could be interesting. I, I mean, I think these are super interesting for like content and ads, but I'm actually going to do a different type of viral uh, hook. So let me go back to that document real quick. Uh, all right, we have a guy doing, uh, can you say hi, Winston? We have a guy doing stuff to our pool, so the dog's uh, fired up, so he's going to be on my lap. Sit down, bro. It's okay. This is what, he's going to help me in a survival. You help me in a crisis. You help me? You can make us eat everybody? You eat all the intruders? You sure? You sure? Okay. So anyway, I think that, again, this is really a bunch of really interesting stuff to go a little bit more out of the box here, but... Let's try like an insider secrets one for the viral hooks thing, okay? So let's go back to the viral every time generator. Let's try this one. So it's basically five little known insider tips, tricks, or secrets about prepping survival, you know, audiences, patriotic, conservative Americans, all that good stuff, okay? So let's let it write these out. And once it does, I'm gonna put some of these in here and I'm gonna show you how to put it all together. I'm not gonna make you watch as it writes these out because, um, you know, but I'll be back in a moment. I'm gonna pause. You won't even know. I'm just pausing the video. Okay, let's look and see uh, what these hook ideas were for insider tips and tricks and stuff like that. It's kind of I've uncovered three hidden signals that predict government overreach. Um, experts are hiding these five survival foods from you. Eh. I guess the question would be like, uh, why? What extras behind those from you? I might say like the government is hiding from you. So I like this one, but if I change it slightly to say, you know, experts in the uh, the U.S. government does not want you to buy number three. Okay. I probably just changed this one to say the one legal loophole to protect your stop off from seizure. I 
I mean, this is okay, but let's put it in there for now. All right, so we've got these curiosity hooks, we've got these promise hooks, right? So going back to the, the kind of writing the lead process. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. I'm about to get on a call, so I'm gonna see if I can finish it before the clock to pause to come back to that. All right, we're gonna write some new leads for the same sales letter and selling the same product. For reference to this section, if I put of the sales letter you analyzed previously is what I consider the lead, and it's what we looked at before, okay? Now for this new lead, here are specific details. Curiosity hook, target demographic, and the promise hook. Okay, we have the target demographic here. We can just plug that in really easily and fast. Okay, because this is one I did earlier for golf. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is pick one of the curiosity hooks. Let's say, um, let's try this one. I kind of like that one, right? That's why I would do. There's ten different types of these. Okay, so curiosity hook. And which promise hook do we want to do? Um, that's fine for now. Again, there's a bunch of different things we could do. Let's start with, sorry, this one, okay? So let's go ahead and put that prompt into Claude, okay? Oops do that oh, I didn't do any spacing on this but didn't super annoying Let's go have that start. So one thing I'm curious about is like, did it really get the, it has the stockpile, I guess maybe because this was already in the lead. And actually what's interesting is uh, I didn't used to give it the whole lead. So I'm curious about what happened if I hadn't given it that lead and reminded of it. So we're gonna test that, but I could come back to this after the video. Okay, I'm back here. So I actually didn't really like what we got with Claude um, because it was too direct of a swipe. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna modify this prompt. Again, I didn't have this in my initial process and I added it. Um, so I'm gonna take it back out. I know, you know, I'm teaching, but also you're watching this, it is what it is. So I'm gonna also go back to that sort of step before that where I'm gonna start a new chat with Claude. So do that. All right, so let's go start a new, a new chat. Here's a transcript of full sales letter in the survival niche. Okay. I'm gonna upload that again. Sorry, one second, actually. I'm just gonna upload it uh, off. Uh, I'm gonna pause while I upload it. All right, it's gonna show like my desktop. It's not super sketchy on there. If you found, if you pause it for a second, you're not gonna find some secret thing. I just, you know, whatever. Okay, so analyze it, right? Once it analyzes it, now we're gonna do this again, but we're taking out the part about the leads, right? Because um, I want to see what happens if I don't tell it to do that. Submit. Let it analyze it, which it should do. Cool stuff here.
Toxic Claude didn't didn't love this, but now let's try what we did before, okay? So buff out the lead. We do a new uh, some new leads for the same so there's on the same product. Okay. One legal loophole can protect your stockpile from seizure. Uh, the weird but insanely effective way to stockpile five to twenty years worth of food for pennies per meal. Okay. So let me see one thing here. Can I just start control V? I don't know why it's doing it where it's uh A little bit better spacing there. Okay. So let's see what it does now, where it doesn't have a. I didn't. I didn't emphasize that other lead on it, right? Yeah. See how this is better than that other one because it's not trying to directly swipe. Um, the previous one. So this time we've got, you know, Dear Fellow Patriot, do you know there's a one legal loophole that could protect your emergency food stop off from government seizure? In a crisis, a recent executive order allows FEMA to confiscate survival food supplies from American citizens. That means if you invested thousands into freeze-dried food to keep your family safe, you could lose it all with the stroke of a pen. But here's the good news. My name is Alex Deacon. I'm a patriotic American like you who believes in self-reliance protecting my God-given rights. And I recently discovered a weird but insanely effective way to legally stockpile five to 10, even 20 years worth of survival food uh, for penny, just for just pennies per meal. Best of all, this approach is so discreet and off the radar, not even Uncle Sam can touch it. I know it sounds too good to be true, but stick with me for just a few minutes because I'm going to share all the details. You'll see exactly how this little known method works and why it's the smartest way for any red-blooded, freedom-loving American to secure their family's food supply. Imagine never having to worry about your hungry kids going without a meal and a disaster. No more fear of desperate mobs leaving grocery store shelves bare and no more relying on the government to feed your family. And so you'll have true food independence and unshakable peace of mind, knowing your loved ones will stay fed no matter what crisis hits, even better you can get started for less than the cost of a week of groceries. So if you're serious about survival and self-sufficiency, you owe it to yourself to see this. Just keep watching it. I'll reveal it all step by step. Because like a wise man once said, by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Let's make sure it doesn't happen to you and your loved ones. Okay? So that's actually cool. That's a good variant we could test. Now, this is where it gets really neat. Okay? So if I go back to this, I have before. It's a great job. Let's do another with the following information. That's all we really... I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna take this and put it over here. All right. So now all we're gonna do is switch out hooks. Okay. And that's where it was cool because we got a bunch of them. Okay. So we had the legal loophole. So let's do uh, let's do it like this instead. I'm gonna do preparation secrets. I survival secrets. So I'm changing that a little bit. Okay, so that's our curiosity hook. So now our hook is this one. And for the promise, instead of stockpiling food, let's go find another promise. Um, let's do this dust, dust bowl devastation map one. Was kind of interesting, right? So now what we're going to do is enter this, okay? It's like for another. And I'm going to go and get prepared so I can actually do another one after that. So while that's writing that one, Okay, for our next one after this one, the Palestinian one's kind of interesting, right? That was sort of your curiosity. Actually, that was a promise hook, right? That could be both. Like, all right, I like that one, but because it's more of curiosity, let's do. Uh, I don't need that part. Let's do food riot forecast for our next sort of promise. Um, and then for our curiosity hook, we'll do
cool. This is a terrible idea, right? Let's try that. So let's look at this lead. Patriot American, in time of crisis, do you really own your emergency food stockpile? Shockingly, the answer would be no. An alarming executive order gives FEMA the power to seize survival foods from citizens in the event of a national emergency, but one little known legal loophole could keep your supplies safe from government confiscation. My name is Alec Deacon. Like you, I'm a god friend patriot who believes in liberty and self-reliance. I've dedicated my life to helping fellow Americans prepare for the worst. That's why I'm urgently reaching out to you today. Disturbing signs point to the return of 1930 dust bowl conditions across America, a perfect storm that could devastate your food supply. That's an interesting hook, right? By the way, I might lead with that hook. I might, I could tell Quad or I would change it right, if I was, you know, doing this. Um, Cray Lona resource called the Dust Bowl Devastation Map reveals the uh, areas experts predict will be hardest hit by drought and food shortages in the coming crisis. More importantly, I'm going to show you, your family how, show you how to protect your family's food security. Even if you live in an at-risk area, you'll discover legal and surprisingly low-cost way to stockpile 5, 10, even 20 years of high-quality survival food. Uh, this closely guard secret is so effective, you may never need to buy groceries again. It's so discreet, the government won't be able to touch your supply. Look, if you care about your family's well-being and worry about depending on Uncle Sam when things get bad, you need to see this immediately. In the next few minutes, I'll walk you through exactly what to do, click by click. There's no fluff or filler, just critical information every responsible citizen needs to know. Because mark my words, a food catastrophe is coming to America. The only question is whether you and your loved ones will be ready. I urge you to take a few minutes to watch this now while you can, because true freedom means never having to rely on someone else to feed your family. And isn't that what being self-reliant American is all about? I don't know if I like that last line, but that's a good line too, okay? And so, great. Now let's do this one we just did, okay? So, got our curiosity and our promise. Great job. Let's do another one. And I mean, after this point, I'll stop because I don't feel like, you know, but again, I only did two of the, um, like, viral hook types, I think, really. I mean, I guess I did the one series I could come back to. But really, if you do all these different viral hook types, I think I, just, I picked nine for this, but there's 10 in that document I, ch I shared with you. And you have, like, hundreds of different kind of hooks, which, again, can then be taken and applied into the lead and combined with different promises. And obviously, you could take more time with Claude and come up with more promises, too, right? Um, Dear fellow patriot, like many prudent Americans, you may have considered using gold or silver to barter for essential supplies in a disaster scenario, but here's the shocking truth. Precious metals are likely to be utterly worthless if a real crisis hits. Because when your family is hungry, you can't eat a gold coin. No one will trade you food or water for a silver round when their own kids' stomachs are empty. As I'll show you in just a moment, food itself will be the most viable currency in an emergency, and only those with ample supplies will survive and thrive. My name is Alec Deacon. I'm a red-blooded American patriot just like you. For years, I've been helping liberty-loving citizens prepare for the worst so they can weather any sort of confidence. And today I'm compelled to share an urgent warning about, uh, with you about a looming food catastrophe, the kind of disaster that could bring this great nation to its knees. You see, I've developed a chilling indicator I call the Food Riot Forecast. It predicts civil unrest based on proven links between global food supplies and violent uprisings worldwide. I know it sounds far-fetched, but I'll demonstrate, as I'll demonstrate, every time the Food Riot Forecast hits a critical threshold in recent decades, chaos has erupted like clockwork from the Middle East to South America. And now the forecast shows we're approaching the dangerous tipping point once again, right here in our own backyard. The evidence is indisputable. But here's the good news. In the next few minutes, I'll reveal a simple but stunningly effective way to secure a massive personal food reserve for your family. And after the last five, 10, even 20 years for just pennies on the dollar compared to regular groceries, and I'm talking high quality, nutrient dense food, not worthless Franken food. If you're a proud, self reliant American who refuses to depend on the government to feed your family in crisis, you need to see this immediately. Just give me a few moments of your undivided attention, and I'll show you exactly how to build your own food fortress step by step. There's no fluff or filler here, just critical, actionable intel you can use right away. Because when the food riots begin, it will be too late. Only those who prepared in advance will be able to keep their loved ones safe and well fed. And again, I don't really like this question at the end. Um, but those are some interesting leads, right? Obviously, we can copy chief them, both using the cloud process I also shared this week. Uh, or, uh, you know, you can make your own tweaks and changes. But, like, uh, hopefully you can see how doing this, I could literally have 10 or 20 different leads to test very fast. So that is the training for today. Hopefully you find that valuable. I'll make sure to share all the documents and thank you for watching.